So my presentation today, actually, good morning. Thank you uh, to the, the GPD uh, Technical Committee for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my presentation is on the durability of structural sealants and cold vent glazing applications. So the idea behind this research is uh, trying to develop a more uh, holistic method uh, of uh, data uh, for use in FE applications for cold vent, cold vent glazing. So uh, just a quick operational definition, though I know most of you all are aware. Cold vent glazing is uh, the application of taking a perfectly nice and flat curtain wall, um, and when in construction on the building, you actually bend it into place. So you're putting a, uh, um, a, uh, a tension load on it, a permanent load, uh, in lieu of a uh, hot vent application. So the picture here is actually a um, pictures of a project that were cold bent and completed in 2007 in New York City. Uh, this is the IAC building. Um, and it was, uh, you can see here that they're manufacturing these nice flat uh, curtain wall. And as they put them up on the facade, they are pinning three sides of this and then bending the corners in. So what it gives is an impression of, you know, a building kind of twisting out of the earth, right? A, a very unique um, application. There's a, there's a couple benefits with cold bending. Um, building things that are flat are easier probably to tolerance. The challenge is though, is that you're putting a stress into them. And so the question is how much stress can I put into the components of a, a cold bent, um, a cold bent curtain wall assembly. So this is gonna be solely focused on, you know, what is happening to the sealant um, and, and the research that we did to try to develop a, a, a more predictive model that hopefully can be um, used um, in, in FE in a more holistic approach. So what's, what's good about this, this project is there was a, a paper written about it after it was fabricated. And what this paper did is it looked at durability of the insulating glass unit. But the good thing for us is we were involved so we have all the, the CAD drawings and things like that to where we can actually use this in part of our data development as, as part of a regression analysis to try to understand durability. Um, if you're interested, you can purchase this paper. It's, it's out on the ASTM website. Um, you know, just for purposes here, the, the units that you were seeing here on the, uh, the building were 1,500 millimeter by, by uh, 300 millimeter. And the bend there in the corner was uh, approaching 750 millimeter so that's pretty pretty significant we've got pictures of a of a mock-up of the actual bending um, that occurs so you can see you know quite a bit of uh, deformation here in, in this flat frame what's interesting about this is um, FE was actually used in the project but it wasn't necessarily used for what's happening to the sealant it was used for uh, a lot of the glass stress distribution things like that for the glass, uh, for the sealant, um, it was just a mechanical determination. How much load does it take to bend this plight, uh, light of glass um, into place? And then that load was limited to 0 0.07 megapascal or one PSI, which is you know, a typical recommendation by sealant manufacturers for the allowable stress for a permanent or, or dead load in the project. So the purpose of our study is, you know, how do we, how do, we um, do a more integrated methodology of design via FE analysis? How can we develop better data for people that are using FE to try to understand what type of stresses and the distribution of stress, as well as the effect of creep in the sealant that's being permanently loaded in these cold bending applications? And we did that by building physical mock-ups, um, focusing on the sealant behavior we, uh, we measured the deformation over time. We actually measured some of the uh, crack propagation. So after it failed, we looked at how quickly does it fail. And then we also did FE models just to confirm that our physical, vali or, or validate our physical mock-ups or make sure that there was alignment here. So our physical mock-up consisted of um, this assembly. So, so it, it was a, um, our sample was a, was a plate, an aluminum plate with a cutout in the middle. 
And then we adhered another plate up underneath using a, a silicone sealant. And so that allowed us to, uh, and then we had these um, points of attachments. We're pinning the sample here in three sides. And then we have just a, a simple hand jack, um, hydraulically actuated, um, that can deform or, or, um, or uh, uh, bend the plate here um, and then hold it in place so that we can look at what's happening with the spring-like action of the deformed plate onto the sealant uh, replicating what we would see in a, in a cold bend application. Um, and we replicated this um, via an FE model. So what we wanted to do is, you know, measure what we're doing and then confirm are we getting the same thing in our theoretical model using FE. No surprises here. Um, aluminum and glass are uh, modulus around 70 gigapascal. We used a uh, Mooney Rivlin 2 parameter for the sealant that was used, um, which was a two-part sealant. The dimensions of the, uh, the plate in this instance were 500 millimeters square, and then the cutout was, uh, uh, was around 233, and our bite was 26 millimeter by, by 9.35 millimeters. So the first test that we did is we just started deforming the plate. And we wanted to see at what point are we going to get kind of spontaneous failure. And what we found is after X amount of st extension, we f saw a crack here um, uh, initiate. And so what's interesting is that in the uh, FE analysis, where this crack initiates is actually where we found the highest peak max principal stress. So kind of first off the bat, we kind of come up with, oh, you know, we've got a good correlation here that maybe something in our FE model is a good predictor of durability. Um, and it can be used to help, perhaps help uh, estimate failure or potential for failures in these types of applications. So we did a second test, right? We didn't want to take it to failure immediately. So what we did is we backed off the amount of deformation that we had. Let's, uh, so, so we said, OK, if at 123% um, max principal strain in the model is, is going to be an immediate failure, let's back it off 20% and shoot for around 100% max principal strain. And then what we're going to do is we are going to um, um, not only measure the, uh, the deformation immediately after that de uh, in, in the sealant after we put the stress on it, but we're going to measure what happens to the sealant as that, that bent plate is trying to pull it away from itself and go back to its origin to try to understand if there's a function for creep or rupture. And at a, uh, so at a, at a, a measurement of around 104.6% of peak strain, what we found is that, you know, over time you're seeing that the, uh, that the uh, sealant is beginning to relax or creep or move, trying to get back to origin. So at around 210 hours, it's moved close to an inch, I believe. Yep. So at 104% max, um, max principal strain, we found that the unit failed at around 70 days. So rupture didn't occur immediately. It took 70 days for the rupture to occur. And interestingly enough, it was right in the same area where we predicted the highest max principal strain. We kept measuring, though, because we wanted to understand, OK, if we have a failure, what's it going to look like? Is it just going to spring off the building, or is it going to be slow? And what we found is over 100 days, it's it's actually relatively a slow process. So the idea is if you actually bend something, it's not going to be a spontaneous breakage. It's going to be probably something very visual um, and, and something that's not um, going to be an immediate hazard, but something that would have to be addressed if, if it were put under that significant of, of, uh, uh, of a strain. So 
So round three, okay, um, we've got one data point. If we have two, we can draw a line and we can make all sorts of assumptions. Um, so let's put up the, uh, uh, let's, let's increase the max principal strain a little bit in between where we were at and where we know the failure point is immediately. And let's get a couple more data points to see if we can do a, an a regression analysis. So this was, uh, you know, the max principal strain was at around 118%. If you ask why, it's kind of an odd number because we're using the hand jack. It's a very coarse adjustment uh, and we were trying to hit where we could lock it in and keep it in place and not let the, you know, jack relax after, after, after we set it. Okay, so again, sorry, failure at 21 hours. So like I said, we have two data points now. We can draw a line and we can make all sorts of assumptions. Um, the really good thing is if we can get three data points um, and hopefully have more of a curve or try to understand if there's a, you know, a logarithmic relationship to it. And so what we did is we made an assumption with this IAC building, which has been in service uh, for 13 or 14 years, we know the amount of displacement. <clears throat> we can uh, we we have the CAD models. We can do the FE analysis and understand what the peak peak principal strain was in it, and then just make the assumption that somehow it's failed. So reality, the project's not failed. There's no indication that the the sequence failing, but it gives us another point put on our graph to see if we can start to predict um, at what point or or are there better ways to design um, cold vent glazing and incorporate this max principal strain in there to uh, in, ensure or increase durability. And for this project, the, um, the max principal strain was around 20% um, in, in the model. So in putting this in a graph, um, what we found is, is that, you know, there seems to be a pretty good relationship here, obviously linear, but more than likely as time goes on, um, that uh, if you start to limit the max principal strain in your designs, you're gonna start to get predictable. Um, so, so if this is at 20%, this is at 15%, you're starting to get into the 30 to 40 year time period of durability. And obviously, you know, it's probably more than that, right? Because this hasn't really failed yet. Uh, but at least it's a, it's a place to start to try to develop a, a more robust um, methodology and incorporate the idea of uh, creep or, or uh, rupture or stress ro relaxation in, in these permanent lo permanently loaded um, uh, in, in permanently loaded designs. So there's some caveats to this, though, um, in that you know you have to have the ability to uh, in your model have uh, mesh sensitivity. If you're going to be using something as as, as peak strain. You have to ensure that you have fine enough mesh um, that you're not incorporating a, an error, a collection of errors in it, and that you have enough uh, um, discretion in your model to, to accurately predict that. Because if you have too coarse of a mesh, what you'll find is, is that your peak strain could be very um, underpredicted in, in very coarse mesh compared to uh, uh, very fine mesh. So the number of elements matter. Um, so it's not probably something that you can use in, type, in, in a spring type of application for modeling. So it would be involved with things like Abacus and ANSYS for uh, um, um, more sophisticated modeling. So go back and going back to the original project, the IAC, you know, what they said is, okay, we, we can estimate the average pressure in a structural joint due to bending, and that's a good course, um, course direction for design. I think that still applies, and so what we're doing is we're just trying to find out how much force does it take to bend this glass, and then averaging that force over the area of deformation. But in concert with that, we want to do an FE model and find out what is the resulting peak strain, and then going back to our regression analysis to see if it's going to be a concern for durability on where that peak strain may last. So, you know, I think what 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 this what this concluded was is is that 
you know, we now have a little bit more of a robust um, design process and, and able to incorporate FE up in the front end of it versus kind of a post-production to see maybe what, what the stress distribution is for the cold bending um, using the mechanical method. So, you know, in the paper we say keep strains at or below 15%. The IAC building's at 20, so maybe over time as we gather more data uh, in the performance of that, it'll get to 20, but it, at least it's a, you know, it's a start, right? I mean, it's a, it's a good, um, a good, perhaps a better predictor than what we've had in the, in the past. So, that's the end of the presentation. Are there <coughs> any questions? Okay, thank you, John. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao.